All right, so we're gonna pick up where we left off in the last video. We're, we're just calculating different partial derivatives. Example 13 has a function that's defined by an integral. If you were in my Calc BC class, then you had a performance final that was just over FDBIs. In order to evaluate the derivative of a function defined by an integral, we can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus which says that the derivative and the integral are inverses of one another. So in other words, they sort of undo one another, or they cancel each other out. On example 13, we want to find the partial derivative of z with respect to x, and then in a minute we'll find the partial derivative of z with respect to y. So I want to just start by writing del del x of that integral. One of the key things to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus is that the upper boundary of the integral has to be the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to. Since we're finding the partial derivative with respect to x, we need that boundary of x to be on the top of that integral. And we can do that by using one of the definite integral properties. If you want to swap the order of integration, just put a negative in front of the integral. Here I'm just putting the negative all the way outside of the front of the derivative as well. That allows me to swap the order of integration, so I'll put the y on the bottom and the x on the top. Now that we have a constant on the bottom of the integral, in this case we're just treating y as a constant, and our variable x is up top, we can use the second fundamental theorem of calculus and just replace all the t's with that x that's on top of the integral. And that would give us negative 6x squared minus 2x plus 1. Finding the partial derivative of z with respect to y will be a little bit easier. That's because that integral is already set up for the second fundamental theorem of calculus. The variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to is already on top of the integral. The variable on the bottom, the x, in this case, has been treated as a constant. So then just go through and replace all the t's with y's, and then that is your final answer. All right, so pause the video for a moment and figure out example 14. You want to find the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the partial derivative of z with respect to y. Uh, and just a hint, you're going to end up having to use the chain rule in conjunction with the second derivative of calculus to find this. So here is my answers. zx was equal to sine of x to the fourth times 2x. And zy took a little bit of work, but in the end, that was equal to negative sine of 2i minus 1 quantity squared, and then all that times 2. Okay, so the last new thing that you're going to learn in this module is higher order partial derivatives. The notation for this, if you take the derivative of f with respect to x twice, that would just be fxx. And then if you took the derivative of f with respect to y twice, that would just be written as fyy. For fxy, we would take the derivative of f with respect to x first, and then after that, you take the derivative of fx with respect to y. And then this last one, you would take the derivative of f with respect to y first, and then you take the derivative of fy with respect to x and that can be written as fyx. It can actually be shown that if fxy and fyx are continuous on a surface, that fxy is equal to fyx. And we can actually show that in example 18. Here we have a function of two variables, x and y, and we want to find fxx, fyy, fxy, and fyx. The very first thing you want to do here is just go through and figure out what fx is and what fy is. So to find fx, you're just taking the derivative of f with respect to x and treating the y's as constants. Similarly, fy would just be the derivative of f with respect to y, and you're treating x as a constant. Now that we have those figured out, we can find the higher order derivatives. Let's start with fxx. Here we would just find the derivative of fx with respect to x. That first term, 2y, would go to 0 because there's not any x's in it. The second term, 2xy squared, 
the derivative of that with respect to x would just be 2y squared. And then in the third term, the derivative of negative 6xy with respect to x would be negative 6y. So fxx would be equal to 2y squared minus 6y. To find fxy, you want to start with fx and take the derivative of that with respect to y. That would give us 2 plus 4xy minus 6x. To find fyy, start with fy and take the derivative of that with respect to y. That would give us 2x squared. And then fyx, start with fy and take the derivative of that with respect to x. That would give us 2 plus 4xy minus 6x. And notice that fyx is exactly the same as fxy. There is actually no limit to how many times you can take the derivative of these partial derivatives. Here we're finding a third order of derivative, fxyy, or fyxy, or fyyx. The process for doing this is exactly the same as the last example. So go ahead and pause this video and figure out what these three partial derivatives are. And then if you did everything correctly, then all three of them should be the same. All right, so here is what I got as an answer for these. In the end, all of them equaled negative sine y.